April 12, 2013. That's the day life became a lot more interesting for Eddie Wilcoxon. He was at Bartlett Lake asleep on his boat when something woke him up at around 2 a.m. I heard this click, 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 click. That noise was his fishing reel, and it was the sound of something big. A flathead catfish large enough to swallow the two-pound carp he was using for bait. So Ed grabbed his pole and set the hook. When I set it, I went, oh my God, this was a pig, because I could, you know, I've caught enough big ones. I know when I set that rod, that thing just, whoa, just lost. I said, whoa, that didn't move. More than a half hour later, Ed finally won his battle with a powerful flathead catfish. I drug him on the front of the boat and I just kept dragging and kept dragging. I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Biggest fish I've ever had on a boat, I know it was. Turns out he was right. It weighed 76.54 pounds, making it the heaviest fish ever caught in Arizona. People don't understand how big this fish actually was unless you see it, you're like, no, that's not real. That's it, it was real. But sometimes it feels like a dream to the man known as Flathead Ed, who makes his living as a plumber, but would rather be a fishing guide. I got my guide license April 1st, and God blessed me with this fish on April 12th. <laughs> that's just how it went. Everything else has just been crazy. Ever since he caught that record fish, Ed's been getting a lot of attention. People that are producing Duck Dynasty wanted me to do a little video for them, man. I guess they're, they're searching out rednecks in America. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Calls are coming in from all over the world, and his guide business is beginning to boom. I probably get 25 phone calls a day, just people asking me wh what to do and how to do it. Are there any more big catfish like that one out here? Oh yeah. People like That's Nick right. Walter, who That's authors right. the Arizona That's Game and Fish Department's right. weekly right. fishing report. Yeah, I, know there's, I know there's bigger ones out here. Nick was certain his readers would have plenty of questions for Ed. So he arranged an interview out on Ed's boat during a day of fishing on Lake Pleasant. You should take me fishing a lot, I like it. It was a special day for Ed because he was spending it with his grandkids who were visiting from North Carolina. Nine-year-old Devin had been fishing with his grandpa before, but this was a first for seven-year-old Cadence. They'd both seen the photos of their grandpa's mammoth fish and they couldn't wait for him to show them how to catch one. First, they'd have to catch some bait. So Ed pointed his boat toward the spot where they'd get started and on the way, he takes some time to talk with Nick. So what's the minimum you need to go after some monster flathead catfish? I wouldn't go any less than 50 pound braid and uh, good hooks. Mm -hmm. Now, do you need a mustache like this to get? Flathead? It helps, it helps. Yeah. I've noticed it helps. Yeah. <laughs> We're selling those. <laughs> No, actually, you got to grow them. <laughs> but no, it, uh, it, you know, just big gear, big gear, because you're going to you underestimate these guys. Mm -hmm. I use a Kuma 45D convector reels. Uh, they got a hell of a drag system on them. And, and if you try to muscle these guys in, they're going to break you off at a 100 pound line. So you've got to play them in. Big baits, right? Oh, yeah. Five pound carp ain't too big. It's not a chicken liver fish. You don't catch them with chicken liver. I mean, you can on, on an occasion, but they're a live bait fish, so you have to learn. It, it teaches the kids and everybody that fishes them, it teaches you how to catch bait, and now you learn how to use the bait to catch your fish. So it's, you're actually doing two kinds of fishing. You're catching bluegill, you're catching carp. That's your bait. You use that bait to catch your fish. All right, kids, let's get some gill. Get a some quiet bait. cove is the perfect place to start. As soon as he hits that, the weight moves, and then the bobber moves. Once you start seeing it get hit. Ed shows his grandkids how to catch the small bluegill that they'll use for bait later tonight when they're going after the flathead catfish. Right there. Now you watch that bobber. As soon as that starts going down a little bit, it'll start going down. We got a couple. You want to see? Friends stop by to say hi and join in on the fun. <laughs> Bam, got gotcha. you. There's plenty of hits. That's a good one. You got one, you got one. 
Oh, and misses. Practice and catch it, rapid release. As daylight starts to fade, the race is on. Oh, oh that's got to be one right there. To get more bait fish into Ed's live well before it gets dark. Oh, look at there. Bam! Get him, Devin, get him. And with real, that, real. they should have just enough bluegill to last until morning. So Ed starts his boat and begins searching for a place to spend the night. On the way, Ed stops to say hello to Flat Cat Dave, who's also known as the mayor of Bartlett Lake. Ed says he and Dave are part of a tight community of folks he calls flatters. They spend much of their lives on the water in pursuit of flathead catfish, and they care deeply for Arizona's fisheries. Yeah, great people. This is what we enjoy doing, and we practice CPR. I got a lot of pictures. Ed explains that CPR stands for catch, photograph and release. <laughs> no mouth to mouth. <laughs> it's their contribution to conservation. Catch and release. Don't take everything home you got. Put some back. Don't take it all. Let other people catch it. After Ed anchors his boat along a rocky shoreline, he selects a rod from his impressive collection and starts to show his grandkids how to prep the line. Whoa, that's a good one. Ed knows a trick or two when it comes to catching flats. After hooking a small bluegill to the end of his line, he lets it splash around near the surface of the water for several minutes before lowering it deeper into the lake. And it's just like varmint calling. Ed says that sound of a fish in distress is like ringing the dinner bell for flatheads. Hallelujah. But quite often the fish don't come to dinner until everyone's sound asleep. Hear that sound tonight? It's out of bed, Fred. So that's our cue to say goodbye to Ed, Devin, and Cadence. Why are you good fishermen? And I'm blessed by the best. Give them a chance to spend some family time before the soothing waves of Lake Pleasant gently rock them all to sleep. Where they can dream of catching another record flathead catfish or wake up to the sound of a dream come true. Ah, oh, I live for it. <laughs>